we must worship the Christ of Scripture and not one of our own invention. We, many people want a Savior, but they don't want a Lord. Many people want a a God who is of their own invention. But when we start listing things like we did in the uh, the seven things that, or excuse me, the five things that we learned about Jesus Christ, that he is sovereign, that he's the fulfiller of prophecy, that he's king, he's a savior, and he's a prophet. When we start presenting that Jesus Christ to people, Jeremy, I'm not so sure that I'm as interested as I once was. They want a God who will save them from their difficult circumstances. They want a God who will save them from their health issues. They want a God who will save them ultimately so that they don't have to go to hell and they can't go to heaven. But friends, we need a Savior who will save us from our sin and the eternal punishment that that sin brings. I heard someone recently uh, talking about what Christ saves us from. If someone came to you and said, why should I be saved? What's to be saved from? What would you tell them? You might say, well, to be saved from from sin, and that's true. We need to be saved from sin. To be saved from hell, and that's true as well. But hell hasn't always existed. And Satan didn't create hell. We ultimately need to be saved, and this is going to fall hard on the ears of some of you this morning. But let me say it and then explain it. We need to be saved from God. Satan didn't invent hell to punish us. God, the God of the universe, is the one who created hell. And we sinned against that God. And it's the perfect, righteous, unbridled wrath of God that we must be saved from. Fortunately, I didn't make that up. John 3.36 Whoever believes on the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God remains on him. Romans 1.18 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Romans 5, 9, Since therefore we have now been justified by His blood, much more shall we be saved by Him from, and it doesn't say from hell or from our sin, it says from the wrath of God. Ephesians 5, 6, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of of disobedience. Colossians 3, 5 through 6, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. There's something to be saved from, and that's the wrath of God. And there's only one way to be saved from the wrath of God, and that is to come to obedience to put your faith and trust in the Christ of Scripture and not a Christ of our own imagination. If you're a believer here this morning, make sure that your Christ is the Christ of the Bible. You say, well, of course. Of course He is. When you think of who Christ is, do you think of someone who's a friend who's always there for you, a genie in a bottle, a fire insurance policy? Or do you recognize Him as your sovereign King and Savior who's a prophet and the fulfiller of prophecy? Those five things are clearly seen in the passage that we've looked at this morning. Do you see Jesus Christ as the one who says to you, take up your cross and follow me? What what does someone who thinks that Jesus Christ is there as a genie in a bottle to bring them health and wealth How do they respond to a passage like Jesus Christ saying, take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me? When Jesus Christ teaches things like, you must must hate your father and mother and follow me. When Christ says, don't be surprised when the world hates you, the world hated me. 
when, when the scripture teaches us that, that we are not our own, but we've been bought with a price. When the Bible says that we are to be in Romans 1, or 12, 1 and 2, that we are to be a living sacrifice. When the scripture teaches us that we are to repent and believe in the Christ of scripture. Is that the Christ that you follow and that you worship? Is Jesus Christ your king, your sovereign Lord, or is he just a fire insurance policy? When Jesus Christ says old things should be passed away and all things are become new, is that your experience? Is that true of you? In this passage, we learn five things about Jesus that give us an accurate view of who, of who Christ is. Unfortunately, many of us worship a Christ who is of our own concoction. In order, brothers and sisters, for us to worship the Christ of Scripture, we must know the Christ of Scripture. And we don't know the Christ of Scripture just by thinking, well, this, this must be what Jesus is like because I met a really nice person one time, and so Jesus must be like that person times ten. There are things in Scripture that surprise us when Jesus demands this kind of radical followership of us. In order for us to worship the Christ of Scripture, you must know the Christ of Scripture. And there may be some in here this morning who, who have assumed essentially their whole life that they have been a follower of Jesus Christ. But you have followed someone who is of your own invention and your own imagination. He is not someone who you look to as an absolute sovereign Lord. You don't have the option of living for yourself. You don't have that option. Jesus doesn't say, I'll save you from hell. Now go and do your own thing. There is no picture in Scripture of someone who does that. The Scripture makes it clear. I am your King. Whoever shall confess with his mouth the Lord Jesus. Jesus is my Master. That's conversion. Make sure that the Christ that you worship is the Christ of Scripture. And then also, and this might be a little more broadly applicable, make sure the Christ that you present in your evangelism is the Christ of Scripture. And I'm, I'm afraid to say that I've been guilty of this. As I, as I witness to someone, I'm tempted to make Jesus this really attractive Wonderful, He makes life better for you. Money problems go away. Eternal problems go away. Your family problems go away. You won't have cancer. I know someone who's a Christian and they had cancer and God healed them from them and you have cancer, so get saved. And sometimes in our evangelism, in our presentation of Jesus Christ, we give other people an inaccurate, a less than fully accurate depiction of who Jesus Christ is. And our evangelism, let's be sure to present to people, Jesus Christ says, if you will follow me, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Don't seek to win people by presenting a Christ who is a genie in a bottle or an invisible friend or an insurance policy. Call them to shout, Hosanna, save me, son of David, king and sovereign Lord. To the unbeliever who is certainly with us this morning in a room this size certainly there's someone in here who's never repented of their sin and put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ to the unbeliever I want to make it clear that Jesus Christ demands everything of you he is a sovereign king and those who will be part of his spiritual kingship must submit themselves as slaves to his kingship Jesus Christ demands everything of you. He is a sovereign Lord who commands that he must be obeyed. But he is a kind and loving friend. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. This is the gospel. This is good news. We must repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Today as we're remembering the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ. And over the next week we'll remember the events of the passion of Jesus Christ. We'll remember his triumphal entry, his, his betrayal by Judas, his trial by the mocking court, his death and burial and resurrection. We'll remember all of these things. All of this is true. And those who will turn their back on their own way and their sin and trust in Jesus Christ as he is presented in Scripture will find him to be their Savior. He will breathe new life into you. 
being born again and following Jesus Christ isn't hard. It's impossible. It requires new birth. The Bible uses terms like we were dead, we were deaf, we were blind, we were, we were lame. Jesus Christ makes dead people alive just like He had done with Lazarus. He makes blind people see. He makes lame people walk. He makes deaf people hear. And if you're here this morning and you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, He can make you alive this morning. Repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Scripture says you will be saved. That is bringing your life under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and worshiping Him as the Christ of Scriptures. Call out this morning, Hosanna, save me, Son of David, save me, Sovereign King. This is the only way. It is only through Jesus Christ of the Bible. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to God the Father except through the Christ of Scripture. Let's take to heart the lesson that we learned from the crowd and realize that these five things that they could have and should have seen about their Messiah... We must recognize, we must submit to, we must remember and submit our lives to the reality that Jesus Christ is sovereign. He's the fulfiller of prophecy. He is king. He is to be praised as our savior. And he is a prophet. We must worship the Christ of scripture and not just the Christ of our own imagination and understanding.